I mean, one thing is, um, if I'd been born 400 years ago, I, I, my legs were twisted around. I would have been disabled from the get-go, and you know, I probably would have just had some accident when I was four or five and would have been dead. So, healthcare, they put my feet in the cast for the first six weeks of my life. I'm incredibly nearsighted. I'd probably have, even if I was born, you know, I probably would have run into a tree by now or fallen under a horse or something. Uh, so there, to some extent, we're, we're now evolving to be much less physically fit than even a few hundred years ago, simply because life is much easier. The, the real question, of course, is how much will we now be making what amount to eugenic decisions? And that's, that's an interesting and scary thought. Uh, it's happening, I mean, it's, it, in its own way, it's happened in China simply in favor of boys, and that's creating all kinds of social disruptions because there are too many men and not enough civilizing women, if I can say that. Uh, so we're now, in many cases, weeding out certain easily testable things that you can do in amnio testing for, especially in people who have some kind of family history of Down syndrome or whatever. Uh, will we be, yeah, and there's, even now, because in the old days, physical prowess mattered more, I think you didn't have as much kind of intelligence assortment mating or something like that. So, you know, we're, we're already changing how things are evolving without using genetic information. And it's... Uh, Again, people are going to face more and more ethical decisions about how much do I want to control what kind of kid I have. It's, and that's quite apart from all this you know, creating new life and stuff like that. Uh, at 23 and Me, for example, I mean, again, I, it's it's hard to argue with a statement of fact that I think is true. Uh, so, what do you do about that fact? Well, to some extent, you say one, one goal of 23andMe is to do various correlation tests, and it's, it's not very useful to have a, a very limited population. So what we will do is work with foundations and other things and offer free or, or very cheap tests to selected populations with a certain condition, like you know, Alzheimer's or whatever. And we over time we'd love for this stuff to be cheaper and it will be because the the real cost is in the lab that's a per unit cost the cost of our website and the information goes down per person as the number of members goes up so over time this will all get cheaper most good things are pretty expensive when they start out and i i don't th think that's immoral what i think is immoral is when a government doesn't, well, what's the most immoral is when a government's corrupt and steals from its citizens. But a good government representing its people will educate them all and you know, make sure that they have the education and the capability to be productive, and then they can afford to take care of themselves and buy genetic tests. In the meantime, especially in emerging markets, the government also has to be much more involved in health care and things like that. Uh, so. It's the fact that things are expensive is not immoral. The fact that people are prevented from fulfilling their capabilities and are stolen from by their governments and you know, cheated and humiliated is, is what's immoral.